If you're working on a game project in a team, you're gonna need a proper workflow to manage all of that chaos. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that using Trello. Game development itself is already a complex project on its own. With all the different moving parts, and whether it's coding, art, or game design, you'll have considered the fact that you will need to coordinate with different people with different skill sets, and with that, they would have different concerns. So this makes everything chaotic. Some of your team members might even be working remotely in different locations and time zones. So there might be many project management tools out there, but I find Trello to be one of the more flexible tools that can fit almost any workflow. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the workflow that I use when I was working with my previous teams. By the way, you should also check out my Trello course. There's a link with a special discount in the description below. But here's a disclaimer. There is no such thing as the one perfect workflow to rule them all. Every team is working on different projects and will have different challenges. So what you can do is refer to my workflow and then modify parts of it to suit your needs. Okay, so the first thing you need is to get a Trello account set up and then make sure that you have also created a board. Right here, you're looking at my collection of the many, many boards that I have. And I'm going to just choose one for this example. Next, you're going to need to invite your team members to the board. So you can invite them by going up here and clicking on invite. And you can either create a link or send an invitation via email. With that out of the way, we'll first need to set up this board to be ready for our workflow. And the standard of any Trello board is to have lists. So I would recommend that you start with four main lists. The first one would be a backlog. So to create a list, you can just hover over here and click type in the name of the list and click add so the next list we want to do is have a to-do list followed by in progress and then done or completed lists are very flexible and modular that you can click and drag them around to rearrange based on whatever sequence that you want to do. So imagine this as being containers or groups. There are many ways to use lists, but the most common way is to identify the particular status or a particular step in the process of your workflow. For this board setup, when it comes to multiple teams, I will also recommend an additional list and this list would be able to contain the goals that you'll have for the team. This is important so that the team is aware of what they need to accomplish so that they can be super focused on the tasks at hand. So I'll recommend that you add a list called goals for this sprint. Put it anywhere either at the back after done or before backlog. For my case, I'm gonna put it here and then you're all set. Next, we're going to set up and utilize Trello's most powerful and flexible feature, labels. Labels are like tags, where you can filter out cards upon selecting that particular label. It may not be important now, but later on, once you have hundreds of cards, you're going to have to look around and look for a particular card. It's going to be very messy and very time consuming. It's going to get lost in all that chaos. So for this board example, I'm going to show you how you can set up your labels. Click on the menu on the top right. Click on more and select labels. From here, you can see there's already a few labels that I've set up. And each label has a designated color. To set up your own label, you can click on a pencil icon and then key in the name of the label that you want. 
and then just save it. So let's say I pick this color and I'm going to put in a name for this label. Now there are a few ways you can use labels. It's really up to you. It's very flexible, but I would recommend for at least this workflow in this example that you use um, the labels based on the types of tasks that's involved. So for example, game design, um, 2D asset, 3D asset, animation, audio, etc. This would allow team members who are wearing different hats, because let's face it, if it's a small team, you're most likely going to do more than one thing. And this allows team members to declare the different types of tasks that they're working on. And as a team, we all can keep track of it. The second way is that you can use labels to categorize tasks based on roles. So for example, maybe you have a six man team and you'll have uh, two artists, two programmers, and maybe two designers. Then in that sense, you'll probably do something like this. And then you'll create another one called maybe artist. Let's change the label color. And then maybe you have another team for programmers. I cannot spell. <laughs> so these are two different examples of how you can divide the labels and organize all your tasks. Later on, you'll see how these labels work and how they can really help you once we've set it up with our workflow. Okay, now that the board is set up, I'm going to show you the workflow that you'll be using with your team to update this Trello board as you go on and continue your project and activities. So this workflow borrows some elements from Agile methodology. You may have heard of it being mentioned here and there within the gaming industry and is used across other software development teams as well. Basically it allows you to deliver progress of a game in smaller chunks that is good enough to be reviewed and tested. So Agile is a huge topic on its own and I won't be covering it in detail in this video, but do let me know in the comments section below if it's a topic that you're interested in. Now for our workflow, first we're going to need to define what features we want to build within a certain time frame. This time frame is called a sprint. Now it's up to you to decide on a time frame and how long is the duration, but you want to keep it below a month. If not, it's going to be against the whole strategy of building games in chunks and you'll be caught up with building more things at a longer period of time and then you won't be able to review and test constantly. So let's say for this time frame, for this sprint, we're going to keep it to two weeks. And we're going to start defining the features we're going to build or the goals that we want to achieve. Once we have a list of those features and goals, the next thing is to identify what are the tasks that are required for our team to accomplish within that time frame so that we can achieve those goals and build those features. So jumping back to my Trello board, as I mentioned earlier, it's better to have goals listed down in the form of a card so that the team can easily refer to it throughout this process. In case you don't know, cards, for example, this one, they reside within lists in Trello and they can be easily moved around. Basically, cards contain information that you can input. So when you click on a card, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can type in as part of the description, the title, and you can even have checklists within them. You can also do other things like assign members, labels, due date, and etc. So think of cards as an advanced sticky note. With the goals listed down here, and the team has been briefed and aware of what needs to be done, 
you will then need to sit down with the team on the first day of the sprint and plan what tasks will everyone be working on in order to achieve the goals that have been listed. We're going to use cards to also list down the different tasks that the team needs to work on. So I'm going to jump ahead and quickly do that. In the beginning, all the cards and tasks reside within the backlog. Think of it as a long list of things that you need to do throughout the entire project, not just this sprint. And as you can see, you'll also need to categorize these cards using the labels that we set up earlier to ease your workflow. For example, this is labeled as programming. You can easily label a card by clicking on the labels here and selecting which label it will fall under. You can even mix and match them if required. And you can easily remove them. You can also quickly do that by hovering over a card and clicking on a pencil icon. And this is like a quick shortcut menu for you to easily do a few things such as edit labels. So imagine if you were to look for all the 3D tasks. Right now you can see it's nice and expanded here. You can even shrink it down. You can see that right now it's all over the place. But if you go to menu and click on filter cards, you can see the list of labels that you have and then you can quickly find the types of tasks that you were focusing on. You can even mix and match to filter out only those labels that you have selected. So imagine, like I mentioned before, if you have hundreds or thousands of cards as your project moves on and things get more complex and you have more team members, this feature of filtering cards using labels is extremely powerful. So this is one of the most important thing that you want to do as a team and form this habit of listing down tasks in the form of cards in Trello. Even when you have a new idea, even though you're not in a meeting, make it a habit to list things down here. Do not waste your brain capacity and willpower on memorizing these tasks and don't even write them on a piece of paper because you're going to lose that piece of paper and you can then reserve that extra willpower and brain capacity to focus on what's important, like actually learning a new skill or actually solving problems or even build features for your game. Now, back to the workflow. Once you have all the tasks listed down, you'll need to discuss with the team and assign the tasks based on what can be realistically achieved within the duration of the sprint, which is two weeks in our case. Let's say you can't estimate as accurately, which is fine. Even I can't. And most teams require a few sprints before they get better and better at estimating their task. So during the discussion, you will then narrow down, maybe these three are good to go and the team feels confident they can accomplish it within two weeks. Then you move them to to do. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of other tasks that we'll need to discuss with the team and be thorough about your discussion to ensure that they are confident enough that they can deliver and they understand what needs to be delivered within these two weeks to accomplish the goal set here. So go on and discuss with the team. And let's say the team has decided that based on their analysis that they can only commit to this many tasks. Everything in the to-do list is what's being committed to this one sprint. Everything else that cannot be done, or if any new uh, problems or new tasks that come up throughout the project will always go to the backlog. Imagine it being like your inbox for your email. It will just contain everything. And it's up to you to sort out what needs to be prioritized, which is in the to-do, and what's to be done later. As the team works on the task. On a daily basis, everybody needs to check what's in progress and what's been worked on. So just simply move your task to in progress based on what you are working on. Like that. And then when the task is done, you can easily move them here to done. 
and then you'll then get the team member to move on and check what else needs to be done within the to-do list and then drag that to in progress as they start working on a new task. This will then keep the team updated on what's being worked on, what's finished and what's left to do within this sprint. So then you work on until all the things in, in progress is set to done and then pick up new tasks from to do and make sure that everything is then done. So then imagine this is the last day of the sprint and this is what it looks like. You'll need to stop everything that you're doing and then give some time to review all of the progress that has been accomplished. And during this review process, discuss with the team about the different pain points, the different challenges, and also what has been working well so far. This gives each team member an opportunity to suggest solutions and also share their problems. Now, imagine if the next sprint starts all over again. This is day one of the new sprint. We'll first have to define the goal of the new sprint. If it remains the same, so be it. If there's things that are done, check it off the list. And it's clear to our team now that we did not meet the goals to achieve whatever has been set out and listed down within this card for this sprint. That's okay. The whole process here is to make sure that the team continuously improve and maybe understand better about the different pain points and maybe even come up with better estimates and give themselves more time to work on the different types of tasks. It's a learning process and your team will continue to improve. So during this new sprint on the first day where you plan your sprint, as I mentioned, review your goals and then decide what to do. You'll have to first look at what was inherited from the previous sprint that was not finished. These are the tasks that were still halfway through in progress and the team members were not able to complete them. So they will be factored in to be done in this sprint as well. This is important because we do not want to miss out on any tasks. However, if you discuss with your team and decide that these tasks are no longer relevant, things can come out in the middle of the development and you decided, you know what, these two are no longer relevant, then feel free to get rid of them. If not, you must factor in that you have two extra tasks here to be worked on on top of all the new things that you'll be doing for this sprint. So you discuss with the team and decide these are the remaining things that you can work on. To make things cleaner, you can also archive everything from this list. So then from there, you can create a new done list so that you have a cleaner done list for this sprint and you won't be confused with what was done in the previous sprint. Don't worry, in Trello, you can always recover back things that you have archived. If you go to the menu and click on more and then click on archive items, you can see that there are things here when you click on switch to lists. There's a bunch of stuff that I've archived before and I just click send to board and it'll return back to the board. So a smart thing to do would probably put in uh, either a sprint number or a date here so that you know that this done list is for sprint one. So that when you archive it and when you send it back to the board, you know that you can review this knowing that it's not the sprint, it's the previous sprint. And so the cycle continues. Your team will work on more features and more tasks if there are new goals in upcoming sprints. And by right, your team will be improving on the accuracy of getting better with the estimates and how much they can commit in a particular sprint. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. If you want to use Trello as an individual or a solo developer, you can check out my other video right here. At the time of this recording, I have more than 2,000 students already enrolled to my course. 
and it's got lots of positive reviews. So if you're interested, there's a limited time discount and you can get that by clicking on the link in the description below. So get it now because trust me, with that amount of discount, it's totally worth your money. As always, I have to thank my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generous contributions I'm able to do videos like this. By the way, they're also supporting my game project, What The Hex. You can check it out right here. I upload devlogs regularly on my channel, so do subscribe if you want to get more of that. Thank you for watching, take care, and have a nice day.